Yay! Hello, lovely humans! Jen Foxbot here. In today's episode of Math Mondays, we are continuing our exploration of electrodynamics woo, by looking at linear dielectrics. If those two words are a little intimidating, don't worry, we will break them down. I'm really excited about this topic because it is near and dear to my heart. It was very central to my graduate research project where I designed and built a soil moisture sensor that could control an irrigation system. So linear dielectrics are super useful and it's really cool because it's a widely practical application of electrodynamics. To be fair, there are a lot of practical applications and I think maybe I'm biased because I this just pops up in the work that I do all the time. So I'm really excited to dig into it with you. Okay, let's back up. So we've been talking about uh, what happens when you apply an electric field to an insulating material, which we are also calling a dielectric material. When you apply that electric field, the charges either in the atoms or in the molecules, or sometimes both, they will move to align themselves with the electric field and that causes separation of charges within the material. We're calling these bound charges. Um, and so um, for a lot of materials, it took me a really long time to get a piece of chalk. For a lot of materials, uh, the resulting movement of bound charges, which we're calling polarization, is directly proportional to the applied electric field. Or in other words, in math words, uh, the polarization P is equal to um, the vacuum permittivity times this new constant um, times the electric field. Um, and this is where the term linear comes in. This is a linear relationship because if we were to plot uh, the polarization as a function of the electric field, it would look something like that. Um, not to scale. I uh, don't know what that slope is. And it would depend on the material. Ha ha! So we know this constant, it never changes. This is called um, the electric susceptibility. Basically how susceptible, hey, the material is to being polarized. Materials that can be polarized more by, an by the same electric field will have a higher value. Um, okay, so again, this is a linear term um, for nonlinear you basically end up with um, at least one or more terms. Often it's some constant times the electric field in the cubic function. Uh, I'm not gonna, you don't need to worry about that right now. We'll focus on the simpler stuff, but I do wanna make a point that um, you can uh, kind of follow this process for nonlinear materials as well. Uh, just more terms to deal with, woo. Okay, so, um, do, 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 do. This depends on the molecular and atomic structure of your materials and on temperature. Ooh, that's super cool, a little spicy too. Okay, so the other thing I wanna point out is that this is the total electric field. And this is where things get a little tricky because, okay, we've applied an electric field in our material, which is made up of charges um, or ions, um, is like, ah, and it moves uh, the charges in that material move in response to the applied electric field. And then we were we discovered that because the material now has bound charges or dipoles, separated charges, there is now an electric field inside that material. And then that electric field can potentially influence the charges outside. Wait a second. Now I feel like we're in an infinite loop or some sort of downward spiral into no man's math land. No person's math land. Um, yeah, fun. So because of the interplay between the polarization and the electric field, it's way simpler to work with the displacement. Yay! So when we're dealing with problems with linear dielectrics or dielectrics in general, uh, it's often a much simpler approach to start with the displacement. So that's what we are going to look at. Um, okay, so the displacement uh, is uh, defined or well equal to uh, the vacuum permittivity 
times uh, the electric field plus the polarization. Oh no, I'm running in. We'll just say total over so. Okay. Um, and so let's replace the polarization with this equation. Um, so epsilon naught times the total electric field plus epsilon naught, the susceptibility times the electric field. Ooh, and we're gonna simplify our equation. So we can pull out epsilon naught. We can also pull out E, epsilon naught, one plus the susceptibility times the electric field. That's a half arrow, because it's a vector. Okay. So now we're like, hey, wait a second, these are all just constants. This one does change with the material, but it is a constant. So we are going to define something new. Yay, because we want to be lazy, and instead of writing a bunch of things, we just write one thing. So we're going to define uh, the permittivity to be equal to the vacuum permittivity. They are different. The vacuum is not a dielectric, um, times 1 plus this susceptibility. And we're going to define, um, well, okay, so we're going to do this then. So now we just have the permittivity times the electric field. Um, and I also want to mention the relative permittivity, which is epsilon subscript R, which is defined to be um, just one plus the susceptibility um, or uh, epsilon divided by the vacuum permittivity. Um, and this is kind of nice because it... Uh, it um, kind of mostly just depends on the material that we're looking at instead of also the vacuum permittivity. And it also kind of gives you this interesting ratio. Um, this is also called the dielectric constant. So that might be a more familiar term to you. It's typically what I see when I am doing researchy things. So again, um, the relative permittivity or the dielectric constant is a property of the material. Um, so materials that can be polarized more have a higher dielectric constant than materials that can't really be polarized. And it's actually kind of related to how well that material can conduct electricity. So water, for example, can, uh, has a much higher dielectric than air and soil. So when I was designing a soil moisture sensor, one of the, the questions that I had was, well, how can I measure the difference? What things can I look at um, uh, to measure uh, the change in water content if I'm building a soil moisture sensor? And so I actually used the dielectric constant. Super cool. Okay, so now that we have this definition um, for uh, our material, we can start to look at an example. All right. So, um, and now I'm like, we're pushing 10 minutes. So I'm going to stop this part one for now and go to part two to look at an example problem. Yay. Spur of the moment deciding to split the video into two parts. Um, cool. Yeah. So this is the displacement in terms of the um, permittivity. If we wanted to write it in terms of the relative permittivity, um, uh, it would just be uh, do, 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 epsilon naught times the relative permittivity times the electric field. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. There you go. Check out part two. Yay! <laughs>